So I'm gonna be showing you my drone, which is my fat and free standard. I bought this back in 2015 for a price of 619 pounds. I've got the drone, the controller, two sets of batteries, amazing drone. Now, DJI bought out the fat and free back in 2015. They first bought out the, the DJI fat and free professional and the DJI phantom advanced. Get that right. Uh, and then a couple of weeks later, or months I should say, they bought out the standard. The thing that a lot of people got upset about was when they bought the standard out, even though it was a 1080 full HD drone, it was also a 2.7, which uh, I believe also the Phantom 3 Advance was. So some people were upset. I mean, obviously the main thing was it was a cheaper drone. The range on this was Wi-Fi and went up to about a thousand meters, if that, to be honest. Um, it's a 12 million pixel camera, uh, it was JPEG and RAW, DNG, amazing, you know, got a gimbal, you can see it on your screen. It was the DJI Go app as well, which was, you can still use now guys. Now the last time they did an update on the DJI Go app for the Fratton Free Standard was back in, because I've got that written down here, was 23rd of June 2017, so it's going quite back a while. As far as I know, I've had no problems. What I'm gonna be doing over the next couple of videos uh, is showing you me flying this drone, going through some of the modes, can we still do the follow me mode and things like that. Um, but on this video, just gonna be talking a bit about when I bought this drone, the stuff that I bought for it, is it worth buying stuff for this type of drone uh, and also the setup. And then on the next video, we'll go out actually outside where it's nice and clear. But getting back to it, thousand meters so anyway let's get my battery big battery now unfortunately i've only got one of these left now <laughs> i did have three of these two of them are already sort of packed up now this one um i've marked all my batteries as well this one i've had a few problems of it so i always make a note of every time i fly my drone which battery so i can keep it in sequence the controller Obviously, it's, you can power up the controller, whereas the other one you had to put batteries in. This one you can control it up, so you've got to charge up the controller. You've got the switches to control the drone. Now, if you notice on top of there, um, I've had a, a range extender fitted. I'll talk a bit more about that in another video. Um, unfortunately, I had to fit this on and I can't take it off. It's pretty easy to fix. It did give me that extra distance. It won a huge amount, but it, it was better than it was. Uh, I'll explain about that, like I said, in another video. Another thing worth having is a, a neck thing to keep your control, because it does get quite heavy. Now, on here, you can put your phone on there. Um, now, I did have another thing in here. I can't if I can remember where it is. Because, <clears throat> obviously, because with your phone, it's quite a small screen. Um, I did have, this is a sticky back thing that you usually have inside your car and you stick your phone on it uh, I'll stick it on there and I can stick it on the back with a iPad mini um, and it did the job but because I haven't used it for so long the stickiness is gone so I'm sticking back to using my phone <laughs> now another thing you might notice on this arm here uh, when you bought when you buy the standard it's a plastic arm now I've got a metal arm why they changed it I don't know maybe it's keep the cost down now this metal arm come off my uh, Vision Plus. I'll put it onto here. It makes it a bit more stable. You put your phone in there. I will show this later on. So that's your controller that you need. Um, obviously, I bought some more batteries. They've gone over the years, but I've still got one left. Some of the things that I bought, like you do, you watch all the videos, uh, with some prop protectors. Honestly, guys, waste of time. Um, I tried these once. I, was, I went into a building, the wind caught it, it just threw it up against the wall, it wrecked the props. If anything, it's more of a hindrance than an aid. So that, that's my point of view. Uh, but also you can use the where the prop supports are, it can give the the engine mounts a bit of a... I've got one here as well, I've had a, I've had a few little crashes and it's slightly cracked it. I think another thing that I have noticed, I don't know if you can see that very well, um, there is a crack there 
and that is a stress crack now some of the fratten free standards and some of the other ones as well the professional the body was uh they had a weak cracking points uh and some of them really went straight away i had mine for I don't know, six years now that's the only stress point i've had i was giving it that bit of support that seems to have helped it some of the things that also i bought i thought i'd try out you can fly your standard on one of these so you put this on you can sort of control it you can't do it on the dji go app guys you've got to buy the litchi app on the litchi app there's a facility on there where you can use the 3d glass free fpv as they call it i'll be honest uh these didn't cost much they cost me i don't know 15 quid at the local market you put your phone in there uh, i when i tried this i tried it a couple of times with the app um I had a bit of control i could move my head the drone moved with it and then it just went do well and it started doing its own thing i if you if it's your first time flying a drone don't get this once once you're more experienced give it a go i don't think it, it's a bit of a gimmicky thing to be honest but you buy these things don't you another thing that i bought was the nd filters now with with this type of filter you can see on the box there you actually what it is you you put the, the different filters on there uh, and it actually goes over the camera now what i found was that when you put that onto the camera itself it made it a bit too heavy and i think the camera was struggling especially the gimbal um and i don't i'm not a great lover of nd filters a lot of people are i know if you're into making movies and cin cinematic and things like that getting the frame rate what i'm not i'm just mr auto i just want to take a take a video um but i bought these i'll be honest guys i never really used them much something else that i bought that's wasted time for me personally um and obviously the only other thing i've got on here i've got my charger from the battery now on some of them i think no sorry only on the standard you just get this one on the advanced you get a number of adapter to plug in your controller but on this one you just do your battery and then you plug in this separately uh what i have got in there that i have to mention to people is the instructions <laughs> check the instructions out it's always worth having a quick read for them the other thing you've got to remember guys is back regulations obviously every country now has virtually got its own drone rules here in spain you have to be you have to be registered as a drone operator it's the same in the uk um, and it's the same in the rest of europe now and um, and also making sure whatever country you do go to don't think you're covered for it all because you will be if you get your eu uh, drone registration done you're not you still have to check out each country i believe it these uh, drone rules are a lot stricter than here in spain spain's very similar to the uk but yet yeah, be safe right so what i'm going to do now guys i'm going to go back indoors i'm going to show you the setup of this drone uh charging up the battery we'll just go through a couple of checks checking the camera uh checking the props make sure they're all going to be fit before we go out that's that's the thing i always do before i go out i'll just go through it quick it doesn't take long to make sure the battery is fully charged your controller is fully charged the props are all okay you've got the, the adapter for it make sure it's all done pack it in your case and off out so the first thing i'm going to do is do the battery here's the battery like i said before i always mark the batteries this is a pretty good battery i haven't used it for a couple of years to be honest so you just stick it in where the two prongs are in the battery press the button i always double click it so there's the bars once it's all lit up the four green lights that's ready that'll go green as well so that's charging up that'll probably take about 45 minutes no doubt so the next one is my controller i haven't charged this for a long time everything looks fine i might have to adjust that a little bit as i said before this is the range extender bar tech i'll tell you a little bit more about that once we're outside flying the drone but at the moment, I'm just going to charge it up. Now, no doubt this will take probably about 
the same amount of time, 45 minutes. So what will happen, that red light will go out and these will be lit up as well once it's fully charged. So we'll, we'll just charge that up. Now we're gonna look at the drone. So we we'll check the camera, that looks fine. I might, what I will do, I will clean the lens on that. Everything else is good. What another thing worth checking guys is these rubbers. These rubbers do tend to wear, you can replace them. Also, you got these little pins here. They tend to break because if these are damaged in any way, you gotta get a gimbal shake. Right, another thing that I did mention at the beginning was uh, stress on their actual bodywork. Now on this one, I've been flying it uh, since 2015 and I think a couple of years back I noticed there was a couple of stress uh, cracks underneath the engine. Now these are what these are used for putting your prop guards on. That's giving it some strength. I'll check the other ones. They look fine. Underneath you're fine. Sometimes you will get cracks there. But looking at mine, one looks fine. Now there was a batch going back in 2016, which was really bad. And frankly, DJI did replace it. I'll just check the props as well. They look fine. Battery housing as well. Make sure these contacts are nice and clean as well. Looks all good. Bodywork looks fine. So the next thing we'll check is the props. Now on top of the each of the motors, they've got the dots. Now these are for the black ones. Just put them there as well. I'm not going to fit them on. They did go on well. One thing I will stress, guys, is just check that on the props. Usually, when you've had a few little knocks, um, these do tend to wear. Uh, and you can still buy these on eBay. Um, these are fine. I, I've had, had crashes with these dr types of drone. Um, so, yeah, just check that there's no scuff marks. There's, I think I've got some there. What I will show you when I get outside, I've got some different sorts of blades. I will mention that when we get outside. But the, these look fine. And you just put them on there. And it's got, actually got the arrow on the top, which way they go. To tighten them up. Anti-clockwise, I should say. <laughs> I haven't done it for a long time. So these are anti-clockwise and these will be clockwise. And you just, just to make sure that they're tight, you can just finger grip it. Or even I've got a little device, which I'll show you once you're outside. So really now it's just waiting for the drone. Uh, everything's charged up, the receiver's fully charged and the battery. Uh, and then I'll just go through before we go outside, we'll just go through the, the app itself. So once you download the DJI Go app, we just go through the, the procedure of it. So, as always, you have to agree to the terms. Um, permission requested. Would you like to access? Um, I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy with that as well about uh, the mobile thing. I mean, I don't want to break no rules, so I've got nothing to hide. Okay, you just go through all the... Now, these, these sort of things, uh, when I first did this years back, um, I didn't have any of this, but obviously it's been changing over the years. Um, I'm not really into the improvement program. I don't think really you can improve the the standard. So I'm just going to say do not consider. Right, I'm just going to sign in now. You're not going to see that bit, so I'll just sign in that bit. <laughs> I've got part. I'm, I've logged in now. Now, if you haven't logged in before, it's just set up uh, an email account with a password. Now here it's got the new fly safe data found. I'm not, I'm going to ignore that at the moment. I will update later on. So now we're going to find the drone that we're connected with. So it's going to be the standard. Now at the moment, 
it's nothing because I haven't got the battery in yet and that's not fully charged. So once that's all done, I'll show you how to connect it up. Um, and we'll just go through a, a quick couple of things. So this is my um, flight information. Over here, you, you can join the DJI group store if you want to buy something. And there's the zones. You'll probably takes a while to load up. So I'm quite happy with that. Now it's going to show me whereabouts here in Spain I am. It's also showing me the no-fly zones. There is a couple airports near me, but not near enough to cause any problems. So I'll come out of that. Um, obviously you've got down here the equipment. You can edit your film, uh, a little bit about yourself as well. But we're going to wait until everything's charged up and I'll come back to you in a moment. So everything's charged up now. I've charged up the battery. If you just press it, so you've got all the green lights there. So that's going to go in the back of the, the drone. Just push it in. Here, wait till it clicks. So that's done. The controller is fully charged up. You've got your four green lights. It goes down about two lights and then it's best to recharge it again. When it's red, that means it's not connected yet. So, and also make sure these two switches are upwards. So we could do that. What I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna turn on the drone. So what I always do is turn on the drone itself, double click. Until you hear that noise. Turn on the receiver. You then go into the app itself so we're going to go what i always do first is because this is a wi-fi drone you have to go into the settings on the wi-fi just click into that you see the phantom now on this phantom there will be um, a password now usually with all the dji drones um it's one two three no, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I've changed the password on mine over the years. Um, so always make a note of that because if you miss that, it, you're gonna have to go through all the procedure resetting it. So anyway, it's connected now to the drone itself. You've got the green light. Now we're gonna go into the app itself, the DJI Go app. It's gone straight into it. Right, I'm just going to know about the, the fly update. I will do that later on. I just want to show you some of the, the what's actually on the controller itself. Now, this is the aircraft status. It's I was saying about calibrate this normal. I personally don't calibrate my drones unless I need to. What I do, I'll, show, I'll tell you more about this when we're outside. Um, and obviously, we're just going for the aircraft status. That's fine. So this is what you're going to see on the script, on the camera itself. Now at the moment, because we're indoors, we've got no, um, actually it's an ATI mode. You've got the takeoff. You've got all the instructions on the top there about signal, 100% battery, uh, satellites. Obviously, we're not going to get any satellites in here. There's the map down below. Now these three dots are pretty important. General settings. Go through all this because... Um, I always do metric. I'm not into metric, so I'm going to go imperial because I, I'm more into the old-fashioned uh, distance and weight and things like that. Everything else looks good. Now something down here, you might have to change. I'm just looking through here. Okay, so we got top one, main control settings. Return to home, it's got 30 meters. That's fine for at the moment. What I am gonna do at the moment, if it's your first time, guys, we'll put it into beginner's mode, and it's gonna limit us to a maximum height and a maximum distance. And on here, it's 98 feet, or 100 feet, really, and 98. So we're gonna keep it to the beginner's mode. 
the controller, uh, the Wi-Fi, battery. Telling you that now that this battery is still pretty good, which is good to see. And obviously, when it gets to thirty percent, it will start to give you a warning. Uh, advanced settings. I wouldn't worry too much about that. We're just going to go out and fly the drone for the first time. So this is the setup. So I've tested that. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to see if the motors work all right. So I'm going to press the uh, oh, uh, the takeoff. Now with with this type of drone, you just bring the slider across. Okay, so because it's in beginner's mode, it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in to the settings. I'm just going to want to see if the motor start up all right. Take off. Add so, mode. They, at least we know it's going to work. So the next video you're going to see, guys, is me going out outside. We're going to go through a quick sort of start up making sure everything's safe and then we'll just do the box formation and uh, yeah but it's just how good it is flying everything, make sure everything's off because the last thing you need is to get out there and find out you've had the battery on uh, just make sure that all fits in not forgetting the lanyard